This is the most forgiving bread recipe that I always recommend to brand new bakers. You don't need to scale and it's okay if your measurements are a little bit off. Plus this works as a great base for other recipes. Once you make this one once or twice, it's really easy for you to go through and change just a few things here and there to make it your own. Like later you can add a little cinnamon and sugar or you can do jalapeno and cheddar. Also when you're ready, you can swap out the yeast for sourdough. Start with one and three quarter cups of water that is warm enough you would like to take a bath in it. You want to warm your yeast up without burning it and about what you take a bath or shower in is perfect. Next add about a tablespoon of honey. I am using one of my kids plastic spoons because a beekeeper told me to use plastic instead of metal. Apparently the metal is bad for it. I am using raw local honey that has not been filtered or processed but it has sat on my shelf a little longer than I would have liked so it has crystallized. Normally it dissolves very quickly in warm water. If you don't have honey on hand just put in about a tablespoon of sugar. This is less so about sweetness and more about feeding the yeast. I am using active dry yeast. You can also use instant yeast. It comes in plastic or paper packets or glass jars like this one and I have seen it in Costco occasionally in little bitty bricks. I'm putting in two to two and a half tablespoons. If you ever want to replace the yeast with sourdough you can. For that replacement put in about six tablespoons of sourdough starter and put in about three tablespoons less of water and three tablespoons less of your flour. Now I'm going to stir this up gently and then let it rest. You want this yeast to have a chance to rise and bloom. Depending on how warm your house is, it's going to take anywhere between 4 and about 15 minutes for this to bloom. Once it's all bubbly and smells absolutely delicious, it's time to go ahead and mix it in with your flour. I forgot to get it on camera, but I did add one tablespoon of salt to the dough. Give your dough a very gentle stir and then set it somewhere warm in your house, covered. Some people use plastic wrap, but I just like using a lid because it's reusable. You're waiting for this to rise. It doesn't matter how long it takes, you're just waiting for it to at least double in size. For me, it was about 30 minutes today. And I would say this was actually closer to tripling or quadrupling. When you lift that lid off, be prepared. It is going to smell so good. Now this is completely optional. It just makes it a lot easier for me to clean up. I add down a silicone mat and then put down my flour over top of that. When I'm done working with the dough, I can roll the mat up. It's so easy to clean up. I actually give this excess flour and dough to my chickens. They seem to really like it and that prevents any more waste. You can add butter before this rises, but I do think it rises a little bit faster if you wait. I'm putting in about two tablespoons here. This is salt and it sits out on my counter all the time so it's already soft and easy to work with. I gently incorporate it. It doesn't have to be perfect. This butter will melt even more as it rises and bakes into the bread and it won't cause any problems if it's not totally worked in perfectly. Also right about now is when you would want to preheat your oven to about 425. My oven was already on though and as you probably noticed at the beginning of the video it was smoking just a little bit because I am seasoning my cast iron. I actually filmed the process of how I season my cast iron so if you're interested in that you can check that video out after this one. And now I'm going to go ahead and add just a little more flour to this dough to thicken it up. The little scoop I'm using is a quarter cup so that should give you a decent idea of how much I'm adding. I'm taking my rings off because this gets a little sticky and I don't want to mess. Also if your dough is sticking to your hands um, it feels counterintuitive but get your hands wet and that won't really be an issue. I'm not really kneading the dough here I'm just kind of working a little bit more flour into it. It's okay if your dough is a little sticky but you don't want it to be like messy clingy sticky if that makes sense. I did speed things up so you're not bored but that was only about two minutes of me working that flour into the dough. And now I'm just going to flatten this dough out a little bit so that way the bottom of it is smooth. The bottom of the dough is going to be the top of your bread. This is purely for aesthetics. If you don't care about it you don't have to do this. I flip it over a few times in the flour, push down on the dough a little bit, make it look nice and smooth and then I start grabbing the corners and I just pull them right into the middle. Where all of these little corners meet is going to be the very bottom of it and then this part that is down in the flour is going to get flipped over to be the very top of your loaf of bread. This part is not sped up. I'm just tucking it into itself and making it a little rounder so it's a prettier loaf of bread. My big dutch oven which is sitting in the back has been in the oven for most of this so it's already up to temperature. Now it's time to just grab that loaf and just kind of quickly transfer it over to the dutch oven being very careful that you don't burn your hands. This dutch oven is well seasoned but I went ahead and put just a little bit of butter into it too so that way the bread won't stick. Set a lid on and put it in the oven for about a half hour. February is the season of baking bread but right now I am longing to get back up into the high mountains again. We are at 4200 feet and these mountains over here are in the upper 8000s. And if I flip this image, you can see where that rock is the backdrop for one of the most beautiful alpine lakes. I am so ready to get back out there and hike and kayak again. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. Let's take the lid off and have a quick look. You can take your lid off and let it bake just a few 
few minutes if you want it to be even more golden brown than this, but I am very happy with how it is right now. At this point, your house is going to smell like a delicious bakery, but I'm begging you to wait just a few more minutes before you start ripping into your bread. I usually let mine sit for about five minutes in the Dutch oven before I try and pull it out. I use a little spatula and it just pops right out of there. I never use parchment paper or anything else. As long as there's a little butter, it comes right out super easy. Once out, I let it sit another 15 minutes. Oh, and if you are wondering if you can put this in a bread pan instead of a Dutch oven, you absolutely can. As you can see, this is the perfect size to fit into most bread pans. It's best to let the loaf fully cool before cutting into it because if you cut into it too soon, the inside is not going to be fully baked, so it's going to be a little gummy. Nothing wrong with that, just not ideal. It's like impossible to convey how good something is on camera, but I ate half this before I even thought to show you guys, so yeah, it's good. Now you know how to make my favorite beginner-friendly bread. This is still one of my favorite go-tos and I hope you love it as much as I have.